नमो नारायणाय सहनावतु सहनौभन सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाशावह ओं शाति 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 ओं श्री गणेशा नम ओम श्री सरस्वत नम ओं श्री गुरभ्यो नम ओं समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणाय नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओं सच्चिदनंदय विश्वत्पत्तापत्रय विनाशा श्री कृष्णा वह नुम ओ सदाशिवसंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा हरि यो सुस्वागत व्यॉल स्टडी chapter number 4 of bhagavad gita and we could in the last session complete one beautiful section of sadhana let us have some recap in the last session we have seen one sadhana which is called as dravya sadhana what is dravya sadhana whatever material things we have whatever material things we have some portion of it if we give it to people those who deserve it or we give it unconditionally then whatever portion is left with us that is completely now shuddha pavitra so this is the intention behind this dravya yagna when you offer it to someone unconditionally then whatever remains makes bhagwan makes it pure or it becomes pure so this is a dravya yagna tapo yagna then taking some austerity and uh understanding the importance of self denial this is very important aspect one who understands the importance of self denial will not say this is a torture <laughs> otherwise when people take it up or they see or they listen they understand oh why should i do this torture so this is not a torture this is a self denial to reach to the higher level of our own purity so this is a second yagna then we have seen yoga yagna like ashtanga yoga all the eight steps of yoga that is called as the give the path given by the maharshi patanjali maharaj that one follows swadhyaya yagna one who studies the scriptures by self effort also takes up sadhanas like japa also takes up a sadhana of any other mantra also then comes gnana yagna 
one who continuously gets involved in the scriptural study, then he reflects over it and contemplates over it. That is a jnana yajna. And samshita vrataha. Some people take up one vratam and they follow it religiously to gain the supreme effort in their life. Having said so, then in the verse 29, it is said that this, some of the sadhakas, they follow pranayama as a technique. So, pranayama when it is followed, they, we have seen there are three important steps. What are they? One is purak. The first is rechak, removing all the air which is there inside the lungs. Then the second is getting inside called as puraka. Then we have seen the third important part which is called as kumbhaka, the antar kumbhak and bahya kumbhak. So these are the important techniques of pranayama. Having said so, then Bhagavan has said niyata aharaha. So those who take up the sadhana of niyata ahara, we have seen what is called as niyata ahara. It is not only to restrict the food intake, but it is to understand and be very conscious about every intake through our, all the senses. And that is the yajna. Having taken up all these different sadhanas, or some sadhana in life, what happens? The result is there is a purity of the mind. There is a purity of the mind. And then Bhagavan says, such people, those who gain the purity of mind, what do they, what is the final result? Yadnya shishtam rita bhujaha yanti brahma sanatanam. So they reach to that Supreme truth, the substratum of the universe that we understand as Brahma, Paramatma, Tattva. If somebody is not doing any yajna, who does not follow any spiritual path, then Bhagavan has clearly indicated such person cannot get peace in this world and what to think of then any other world of this universe. Having said so, now we are taking up the next verse where it is beautifully mentioned how all these yadnyas are definitely a part of action. But what is the main content of it? One who understands it, then he reaches to that state called as liberation. Verse number 32. Evam bahuvedha yadnyaha Evam bahuvedha yadnyaha Vitata brahmano mukhe Vitata brahmano mukhe Karma jan vidhitan saravan. Karma jan vidhitan saravan. Evam dnyatva vimoksha se. Evam dnyatva vimoksha se. Evam dnyatva vimoksha se. So, one who knows evam dnyatva. Thus, one who knows or thus having known what happens, vimoksha se, one who will be liberated. Now, this liberation is this word, this word should be very much clear in our mind. Many a times Bhagwan is using such expression, sometimes he says, that person comes to me. Sometimes that Bhagwan says, 
that person reaches to paramgati sometimes bhagwan says he gets liberation so all these are synonyms all these are synonyms that one must understand these are all synonyms what it is so again and again one has to be very clear not going somewhere liberation does not mean going from one place to another place no liberation means when the ignorance is completely washed away and there is a complete experience of one's own true identity there is a experience of one's own true identity this experience is not like an object we see as something which is other than me this experience is to know i am that satchit ananda swaroop so this is called as liberation now bhagwan says how this person reaches there evam bahuvidha yagnyaha vitataha thus so many yagnyas they are said they are spread out brahmano mukhe that means it is spread out it is given directly from brahma ji and here brahma ji we can understand as a vedas also so brahma ji re represents here as a vedas so having given so many different yagnas in vedas and that how one can understand by brahma ji tan sarvan karmajan vidhi all those yagnas all different spiritual practices know that they are born of action they are all born of action tan sarvan karmajan vidhi they are all born of action and you understand that vidhi you understand evam gnyatva vimokshase having understood this there is a liberation there will be a liberation of this person now one can say how just by knowing somebody can get liberated okay so this one has to be very clear that all this actions so called as action these are the spiritual practices they are no doubt action oriented but the result of it is purity of mind result of these spiritual practices is a complete purity of the mind complete purity of the mind having gained this complete purity when somebody gets this knowledge right knowledge with right self effort then what does this person knows please note that i as a atma tatva is not karta is not bhokta these actions are being done by this upadhi which is called as body mind and intellect and then what is a absolute realization i am that akarta atma tatva so having realized this evam gnyatva vimokshase one who realizes this one who understands one own true identity to be that atma tatva that person gets completely liberated so that is how bhagwan has beautifully said bhagwan can you just tell me which is the highest yagna so bhagwan says yes verse number 
ಶ್ರೇಯಾನ್ ದ್ರವ್ಯಮಯಾತ್ಯಜ್ಞಾತ್ಯಾನ್ ದ್ರವ್ಯಮಯಾತ್ಯಜ್ಞಾತ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಯಜ್ಞಪರಂತಪ ಜ್ಞಾನಯಜ್ಞಪರಂತಪ ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮಖಿಲ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮಖಿಲ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಜ್ಞಾನೆ ಪರಿಸಮಾಪ್ಯತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನೆ ಪರಿಸಮಾಪ್ಯತೆ ನಾವು here a direct declaration is done by our dear bhagwan what is that declaration it is a great blessings of bhagwan that he has given us such a great choice what is that choice if you reach to this level of knowledge then all the obstacle in the path of realization will be removed completely now let us understand how shreyan dravyamayat yajnat he parantap parantap that is the name of the arjuna shreyan dravyamayat yajnat as compared with the dravya yajna that is called as the material things which we offer or which we do it a charity of it compared to this dravya yajna jnana yajna parantap jnana yajna the knowledge of sacrifice the yajna that is called as the knowledge as the yajna is superior so sacrifice of knowledge is superior what is called as sacrifice of knowledge that means for the knowledge one has to really strive hard and that sacrifice is required to gain the knowledge we will explain it more detail then what is the result of it sarva ಕರ್ಮಖಿಲ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಹೇ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಆಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ನೋಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆತ್ ಸೈಕಲ್ ಸೊ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಂಚಿತ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಂಚಿತ ಕರ್ಮ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಾರಬ್ಧ ಕರ್ಮ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಾರಬ್ಧ ಕರ್ಮ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಗಾಮಿ ಕರ್ಮ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಗಾಮಿ ಕರ್ಮ ನಾ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಟೇಲ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ಇಯರ್ ಸರ್ವಾಕಿಲಂ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾರಬ್ಧ ಕರ್ಮ ರಿಮೇನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಟು ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ವಾಶ್ಡ್ even though this body is living this body is existing sanchita karma gets washed and agami karma gets washed gets completely annihilated gets completely removed example <laughs> you know if you have a right software which can remove all your virus which is there in your computer system and even if some virus comes it quickly destroys that virus and cleans your computer hope this example is very fit example similarly this knowledge is like this software which does not allow any ignorance now to come near to this person at all okay so this all karmas gets annihilated gnane parisamapyate how is it possible one who gains this right knowledge which knowledge 
नॉलेज ऑफ द सेल्फ आत्म ज्ञान दैट इट सेल्फ कॉल्ड एज ब्रह्म विद्या ओके सो दिस वर्स इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट द फर्स्ट एस्पेक्ट इज दैट विच इज कॉल्ड एज ग्रॉस दैट विच इज कॉल्ड एज ग्रॉस सो वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज ग्रॉस दैट ऑल मटेरियल थिंग्स आर कॉल्ड एज ग्रॉस ऑल मटेरियल थिंग्स आर कॉल्ड एज ग्रॉस सो फ्रॉम द ग्रॉस सटल इज पावरफुल as compared to the gross subtle is powerful let me give simple example what is this see body is gross and mind is subtle so if you control the mind automatically your senses slowly slowly gets controlled see mind is control which is subtle and then slowly slowly automatically your senses comes under your control because mind is a king of all the senses okay now subtler than the mind is a intellect subtler than the mind is intellect when the intellect becomes powerful with the right knowledge then that subtlest intellect that intellect can really take care of the mind that intellect can control the mind so what we have seen gross that is body is controlled by mind and in comparison to this now the intellect is subtlest one so that subtlest of uh, entity called as intellect controls the mind so one has to understand this subtle which is controlling the gross so ask this question what is the subtlest of the subtle then the answer is knowledge is the subtlest of the subtle and therefore it can destroy anything which is called as gross please note this point that how the gross gets destroyed because the subtlest of the subtle is the knowledge and that knowledge which removes the gross so what is the gross the level which is first we have understood as these karmas called as sanchit karma and the agami karma how is it possible okay now understand what is called as knowledge one who gains the knowledge so what is called as gaining the knowledge what is called as gaining the knowledge now please understand it is not something like i wanted the object and i got it so we always imagine something when we get it that means it is in terms of something which is called as material gain but in this right connection or in this connection of gaining the knowledge one must be very clear nothing material gain here so please note very subtle point i because of my ignorance was in a wrong notion about my own identity because of the ignorance i was under this wrong impression about my own self identity what was that because of this ignorance i was considering myself to be upadhi what is this upadhi that is body mind and intellect that i was considering to myself 
So, after gaining the knowledge, this wrong notion is completely washed away. Now I know that I am not the Upadhi, but Upadhi is with me. Upadhi is with me. And therefore, what is happening now here? Sakshi Bhava. Sakshi Bhav. So, what happens when you gain this Sakshi Bhav? You understand whatever is happening, please note, whatever is happening to this body, mind and intellect is only because the Prarabdha Karma. It is only because of Prarabdha Karma, good or bad, whatever is happening. Okay. So, when somebody understands this, what is happening is because of prarabdha karma. So, please understand one more important aspect. Generally, there is a wrong notion. What is that? Destiny, which is called as prarabdha. Destiny, which is understood as a prarabdha. That means nasib. In Hindi, it is called as nasib. But what this prarabdha is and what this destiny is, it is nothing other than my own karmas which I have done in the past. So, who is creating prarabdha? Me, myself. Therefore, this prarabdha is not coming because of someone. This should be very much clear in everyone's mind that nothing as good or bad is coming because of someone, because it appears that somebody is giving me happiness and somebody is giving me sorrow. It appears so, but understand it is though coming from somebody but it is the result of my own action. Please note it. Sukha and Dukkha, even though it appears that it is coming to me from someone, but it is because of my own action. Therefore, let us not complain about anyone in the world that somebody is there because of whom I am in trouble. No. <laughs> Swamiji, how is it so? I will be putting myself in trouble. Oh my dear, because we do some action which are wrong actions, which incur a sin and the result of sin is difficulty in life, the sorrow in life. So, this is how this whole chakra is, this is all the whole circle is. So, what one has to understand, okay, whatever difficulty, whatever limitations are there to this body and slowly, slowly those limitations will go away when I experience this knowledge. So, how much is my capacity to understand this knowledge with that capacity or with that speed all these so called as wrong notions, limitations go away from me. Okay. And therefore, if somebody realizes or understands one's own true nature, gains one's own first hand experience, then that moment all these karmas are completely get washed away. That means now there is no chance of again taking a birth at all. There is no chance of taking another birth at all. So, in Shastra, a beautiful, our scriptures give a beautiful example. What is that? So, somebody who loses one's own key and then keeps searching everywhere, everywhere, 
that mother is now so exhausted she is searching in every possible corner of the house what my keys of my own locker and in that locker there is a lot of jewelry and today I have to go for a party so I have to wear the jewelry so she tells everyone where is my key where is my key you have done this you have done that and a very small child who has come from the school now looks at mummy mummy what are you so much disturbed for oh child you don't know go away no no please tell me mummy says my dear child I missed my bunch of keys I don't know where and I am searching from the morning till this afternoon and that small little boy laughs and laughs and laughs oh mummy oh mummy so the mummy gets so irritated what are you laughing for he says okay just come with me he says no no I don't want to come with you just come please so he just drags away mummy in front of the mirror and he says see on your vest there is a small bunch which is hanging ting 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 <laughs> so mummy says oh my god it is to me only <laughs> now just imagine this so called as forgetfulness this happened because she didn't know that this is here only very close to me and it is never lost at all similarly it is said in our scriptures knowing this one's own true nature gaining our knowledge of scripture is like this only dropping this wrong notion that I was this body mind and intellect so having gained this knowledge then all the karmas gets completely annihilated Bhagavan now a very 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 important question I want to ask how to gain this real knowledge I am completely now convinced that the knowledge can get me what I actually now trying to get that is liberation but how to gain this knowledge of Bhagavan the Bhagavan says this is how verse number 34 Tadvidhi Pranipatena Tadvidhi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya Pariprashnena Sevaya Upadekshanti Te Dhyanam Upadekshanti Te Dhyanam Dhyaninas Tattva Darshinaha Dhyaninas Tattva Darshinaha Very beautifully said here. It is said, Tad Viddhi Tad Viddhi know that. What? That Atma Dhyanam Pranipatena How? By complete surrender. Now we will explain this one one word more detail how to gain that knowledge by complete surrender pranipratena anything else Bhagavan yes sevaya by service ok Bhagavan now I have understood complete surrender and the service then anything else yes then when you do surrender at feet of a guru and does take up his seva then what happened then you can ask him the question pariprashnena by asking the right question then what will happen upadekshanti te dhyanam now this guru will advise you or give you this knowledge whom should you I ask this question Jnani Naha 
a man of wisdom. Who is this? How is this person? Tattva Darshinaha. This person knows that Tattva. What is a Tattva? Atma. That Atma is the Tattva. That is the main principle to be known. And this person, one who is established in one's own true identity, one's own true nature, that person is called as Tattva Darshi. That means who sees it, who knows it, one who has experienced it. Okay. So now let us take up one, one, one point. First and foremost, who will surrender? And why should I surrender? That question one must know. So, unless and until there is a Viveka Jagriti called as Viveka Jagriti. What is called as Viveka Jagriti? Vivek comes in our lives. What is Vivek? Discrimination. What is discrimination? First, this question should hit to a mind of a seeker. What is that? There are n number of things which are happening to me and to the people not knowing any reason why. Please understand why the reason is not known. Example, like if somebody is taking birth in a very small so called as hut, Jopri me, and somebody is taking birth in a middle class family, and somebody is taking birth in a great palatial house. Now, how is this possible that the child who is coming is not done any action before? So, why these three different places, these three children are going? What is the reason? Oh, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> this is, I don't know. Okay, I did not do any harm to this person. But that person gave me such a bad words. Why it is so? Okay. See, only my dear and near one who was so loving, who passed away so early, why is it so? That person was also good. Okay. I just gave you some sort of questions. Now you have to reflect that how so many things happening where you cannot find out the right reason at all. When such very important aspect of life hits a mind of somebody, then he says, I must find out. And then he comes to a path of knowledge called as enquiry. He has to enquire. Enquire, enquire. Then, by simple little so called as grasp of knowledge or information, he reaches to another level. Which is that level? Now, that which I understand or I was understanding that happiness was coming from object or person. Now, it is not true. Why? Because I have experienced same object giving happiness and after some time the same object was giving me a sorrow. How is it possible that the object which was giving me happiness turned to be an object who gives me sorrow? That means that object is not the source of happiness. I have understood. Just imagine, this is the second level. So, this person has understood the happiness is not now outside, it is inside. But what is that? Now, such person goes to a guru. 
such person goes to a guru and when he does not understand how to find out that happiness which he has understood is not outside but it is inside. This person surrenders to that master. Who is that master? Jnani Naha. One who is established in knowledge. How is his experience? Tattva Darshi. He has experienced that principle which is called a supreme truth. Then he does seva to that jnani purushaha. What is called as seva? Now which is a very important point. With seva, it is called as tuning your mind with the mind of Mahatma or teacher. Tuning your mind. Example, a frequency to be tuned for so called as any sort of uh, transmission. I will give you a very uh, funny example. You know, before few years, around 30 years or so, when TV just had come, then people used to have long, long antennas. <laughs> and sometimes when the reception, transmission is not good, so somebody is to go on the top of the floor and they is to, rim, you know, you know, remove that antenna. Let us move. Let us move. And then somebody is to scream, Yes, done. Come down. <laughs> yeah. What is that? It was tuning to the right frequency of that transmission. Similarly, our mind's frequency should get tuned to the frequency of the teacher. And therefore, what is a link between seva? Link is seva. Okay. So, this is a very important aspect, seva. So, seva, having done the seva, then you get this right to ask the questions. The questions which you are now continuously inquiring about and you never could get it anywhere. So, such time, this person answers all your questions. So, the first question is why am I not getting this experience of happiness? So, the answer, simple answer is because today the mind and intellect is covered by ignorance. Today the mind and intellect is covered by in ignorance and therefore this knowledge even though comes as an information that knowledge cannot gain that knowledge is not absorbed or not completely understood and therefore the experience cannot be gained what should i do first remove the layer of ignorance and for that purity of the mind is required so do karma yoga selfless service selfless action so every action in our life one has to be very clear let my actions be completely selfless how to understand my actions are selfless when you do the action when result comes you do not have this sort of excitement if the results are good and there is no sort of sorrow or depression if the result are not up to your expectation. That is complete sign of selfless service. Why? Because it is done for the sake of my dear Lord and whatever comes is his prasad. So his prasad is always pure, it is always my own great so called as gift from him. So whatever is coming from the Lord is a gift to all of us. And here we can remember the first verse of Upadesha Sara. Karturagyaya prapyate phalam karturagyaya prapyate phalam because 
of the controller, the universal controller and the controlling power of this almighty controller, he sends us that result according to our own credentials credentials of the karmas, of the action. And therefore, whatever comes to me is not because of some accident or is not because of any partiality, but it is because of my credentials of karma. And then this person slowly, slowly reflects over the knowledge and gains one's own first hand experience. My God! Then after knowing once our own true nature, Bhagavan, is there chance of going back? Arjuna, now I will give you some time. You think and then I will answer you in my next session whether there is a chance of going back to the ignorance level or not. Okay. So, let us now take up our contemplation session. Wherever you are, just sit with a comfortable posture. Check your spinal cord as well as neck. Let it be straight. Eyes closed. Pleasant facial experience. Focused on. One's own breathing process, air which comes inside, fills the lungs, slowly goes out. Let us focus for a minute to gain good one pointedness. Having gained sufficient concentration of the mind, let us recollect all important points of today's session. Bhagavan has said, as compared to material things which we do as a yajna, jnana yajna is superior. Why is it so? Once who gains the knowledge or karmas get completely washed. What are those karmas? Sanchita karma, prarabdha karma, agami karma. Out of these three, Sanchita karma get completely washed. Agami karma gets completely washed. But when this body is there, which is nothing but the result of prarabdha continues till it has its prarabdha karma to finish. 
it has its motion because of prarabdha karma but the person is absolutely unaffected by these so called as experiences because of prarabdha how this person gains the knowledge bhagwan says first he starts enquiring about things happening around him in the world and when he does not find the answers then he keeps going closer to the knowledge as an information he starts developing discrimination power and understands that the happiness is not outside but it is somewhere inside not knowing what is that he has to reach to that person who has this knowledge of supreme truth so by complete surrendering at the feet of the guru doing all sevas for him he tune his mind with his guru this tuning is important to understand the import of the scriptures having gained sufficient purity of the mind and the right advice by the guru this person reflects over it meditates over it and gains one soul first hand experience of the self one who gains that experience remains peaceful cheerful helpful throughout the life ಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದ್ಚತಿ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓ ನಮೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ 